Are you stressed? <clears throat> I need to go through. I need to actually create us a legit like intro for. Someday. I don't Someday. know if we have the name of our show down just yet. Brunch Bunch sounds a little. It's not as. It, it needs to be, I don't know, I'm a little more accurate. But hi, welcome back to the live stream. We do this every Thursday at 10.30, 45-ish. Ish. We get around to it. It's like having a radio show whenever you want. Uh, that is Rebecca Griffith. That is Elise, the Onco PT, and I'm Jimmy. And welcome back to the live stream that we then turn into a podcast episodes and yada yada. Uh, so Elise, you had a thought, which is fun. Yeah. And you highlighted that it is almost the end of quarter one. And you wanted to talk about something good that you had done. Yes. That has brought you positive, I'm guessing, positive results or positive uh, vibes. Very positive results. So I have felt very anti-New Year's resolutions for a long time, mainly because I would set them and then they would never happen um, mm -hmm. because I didn't take the steps to mm -hmm. actually, like, it is a me thing. Hello, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. Uh -huh. But I actually had Rebecca on my own podcast towards the end of last year. And she, like I was dealing with burnout. This was something that I was really struggling with. I was down in basically this pit and going through this exercise that Rebecca had me do has actually worked. And the biggest All difference right. for me, which we can get into like why, you know, like what it was, because Rebecca's obviously here to talk about it. But I was reflecting last night and one of the goals I set for myself was I want to guest on someone else's podcast once a month for the whole year. And this was before this started um, happening. And it was, it's just like, this was probably the first example in my life of like, I spoke it into existence and it's happening. And this is like such an, uh, like a brain unlock for me. And I'm just so excited about it. Now, hold on. So I heard that. Now I want to hear from Rebecca. Why did it work? Well, I would say the, the reason that that particular thing worked, right, was because not only did you speak it into existence, you spoke it to somebody else nice. who could help you manifest yeah. that, yeah. right? So I think that's that's the big piece about this, because then Jimmy says to me, hey, like, we should record this podcast, but I think we need another person. Like, who would you suggest? I'm like, you know who has a goal about being on another podcast? A certain uh, Texas Barbie PT that I know. You can say it text. That's the first time I've ever heard that Texas Barbie PT. What oh, we're that? Barbies. We're Barbies. What does that mean? <clears throat> we're PT Barbies. Have you seen the Barbie movie, Jimmy? I haven't, but I was I was around for the buzz. So I feel like that movie re co opted the term. Where I feel like 20, 15 years ago or fifteen months ago, Barbie was a negative term. Correct. I, was, I didn't I was see the great. movie. So explain it to me we why now it. like women have re co opted Barbie into a positive term. Like, what did you explain that to me? You explain that. I'll go first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have always been a Barbie girl. Like Barbie was the name of the toy forever and always that I played with my sister at home growing up. And so when I played with Barbies growing up, Barbie was everything. My favorite Barbie that I played with was actually a secret agent spy Barbie. <laughs> Didn't realize they had secret agent spy Barbie. Um, and so you know, that, that was my favorite Barbie, but I had other Barbies. And so for me, Barbie was always whoever I wanted her to be. And so now that I've grown older, I'm not going to say grown up. I have realized that that has come through in my own life of like, I can be whoever I want to be. And so that's how I've reclaimed Barbie for me. And seeing that on the big screen was very much like, yes, I am a Barbie. Okay. I am a Barbie PT. I'd say it was like the complete opposite for me though. Cause I didn't have Barbies growing up. Like my mom was like, no, like that's not like a positive thing. Also they were expensive. No. Um, so I didn't really like, I might have played with them in like the church nursery or like places like that. But for me, like I never really felt like a Barbie girl. Cause I never really felt like I fit in and I definitely was never going to like hit that aesthetic. And so for me, like Barbie was this thing that another thing that I didn't fit into. And I spent so much of my life, like feeling like I didn't fit in and then trying to, that I, I spent many of my 42 years trying to blend in and fit in and not be noticed. But I kind of have this personality that doesn't blend very well, which I'm sure you've noticed. And so for me, seeing this Barbie movie was like, there were so many different Barbies. Yes. And that was the coolest. 
Like there were Barbies of all shapes and sizes. There were Barbies that had brown hair. There were Barbies that were black. There were Barbies that were disabled. Like it was, it felt good. Like it felt like you could be a part of the Barbie without being Barbie. Barbie. Yes. And I loved like the, the whole premise of like Barbies can run the world, you know? And so Elise and I have just been like on this Barbie girl PT kick that we are just Barbie PTs now and we love it. And I also in my around age 40, so all, all those people out there who tell you like when you're 40, like your whole self-confidence changes, I think that's absolutely true. In what way? I'm, well, I'm not trying to fit in anymore. Yeah. I've yeah. kind of accepted who I am and I'm leaning into that. And I'm like finding my identity outside of being just a mom, being just a PT, being just a wife, being just a daughter, like whatever that might be. And I'm figuring out and leaning into who I am. And Elise thinks that's some kind of Barbie. Yeah. you. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard this just the other day. And again, I'm very good with quotes, but bad at remembering who said it. But they said you can't blend in and stand out. You can't stand out at blending in. Those two things are in juxtaposition. So we'll right. go back to Elise, and then you guys are giving me some things to think about and potentially do. So why did you say, I want a guest on another podcast every month? Why was that a goal? Like, that's that's a great tangible, that's a task, or that's a that's an action. But how did that fit in your structure? What? Why? What's the point? Why? Tell them what, about the vision. Tell them about the, the keystone. Vision. Tell them about that. Oh that's my the most important oh. part. Oh, my God. Oh, I... Oh, all of a sudden I'm getting sweaty because I'm getting put on the spot in a good way by um, Rebecca. Right. I want to be the premier physical therapist. When you think of oncology, you think of me as a destination, a one-stop shop for getting the most accurate information that you can compassionately implement with your patients. And so for me, in order to increase that awareness of what I do is leveraging other people's audiences so that I can say, hey, this is me. This is what I do. This is how I am going to help you better help your patients that you're already seeing. And so this was one way in which I can increase that awareness without having to go out and build a whole nother audience of people, right. you know, for my podcast. Just changing the world. Just changing, uh, yeah. like, like she she just picked a corner of the world, and she's like, right. I'm going to change it. Now let's play verbal tennis, right? Verbal tennis is where, like, fast mm -hmm. kind of cool. All right, so does this mean you think you're the world's best oncology PT? Is that what you're saying? No. No, but you want it to be known as someone who this is my jam. Yes. And that's probably not easy to do because by stepping out, like, some, you, like, some people might take shots at me, like, who does she think she is? That never goes away. Oh, there are people that do that. Believe both uh, of us know uh, that. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, God. no, I, I, I get that all the time. Yeah, all when the I watched podcast eight years ago, I got who the hell you're a student. Who the hell do you think you are? And I was like, oh, maybe you're right. And other people were like, you're a guy asking questions, and you don't need permission to do that. So, what's the next step then? So, guesting on a, a, other people's podcasts is a great step. What else does this look like? What does success look like? Or did I, I go to back for just a second? Yeah, come back. So, when you asked her that question, does she think she's the world's best oncology right. PT? That's not what she's saying at all. What I right. hear her saying is, I want to help people in the world provide optimal care for this patient population. And I want to be the one that helps build that. And I want to be the one that supports people who want, also want to do that. So what she's saying is, not only does she believe in this patient population, but she believes we need to level up. And yeah. she's committed to doing that work. Is she saying she's the best? No. She's saying, I'm committed to doing this work. I'm going to build it. People are going to come and we're going to transform healthcare. Who's coming with me? This is the Jerry That's Maguire. That's what I hear. This is the grab the goldfish. Uncle P.T. Barbie. Alisa, are you too young for Jerry Maguire? Yes. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> It hurts me in my soul. <laughs> this happens a lot with Elise. Sorry. <laughs> it's because you seem so mature. I'm just like, she knows. <laughs> That's on you. <laughs> um. All right. So let's, all right. So this is kind of fun because Rebecca does sort of like, what do you call it? Life coaching or goal? What would you call uh, this? Professional thing? development planning. Professional development. That sounds, okay. That sounds better. Because I feel like life coaching sounds a little froofy. But life coaching and professional development, they're kind of, they're similar. Maybe not the same, but like the goal yeah. is how do I get this person to do the thing in five years that they want to do now? Like, how do I get them to be that person in five years? Have I ever, have I ever shown you my, 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 the pyramid that I stole? Stole a pyramid from a really expensive consulting company. It's on their website. I just stole it. 
Here it is. Sorry, it covers up Rebecca's face. Oh, Here it is. Okay. So this is from this company called Bain and Company. They're one of those consulting firms. You are an organization and you need help. You hire a consulting firm. You pay them lots of money for them to come in, tell you what's wrong, then tell you what to do. And then a lot of times companies just don't do it. It's so funny. It's like therapy for companies. Well, anyway, what's on the screen right now, if you're watching a live stream, stream is there 32 uh, elements of value. This essentially is their periodic table of what people will value in a product or a service. And let me give it some context. So on the screen, it's set up like a pyramid. It's broken into four sections, functional, emotional, life-changing, and uh, social impact. And the idea is, what does your product or service have? And then I like to, to chime in. And what also are you communicating to your audience that you have? Because if you have it and don't communicate it, it doesn't matter. If you communicate it and don't have it, people are going to come and be disappointed. So both need to happen. So the uh, the 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 product that has the that checks the most boxes on this pyramid. Do you have any? Would you have any guesses? It's a very pro popular product that a lot of people own, myself included. What is the thing that checks the most periodic the elements of the B to C business to consumer value pyramid? Any ideas what it is? Communication. No, no, no it's a product, like a thing you oh, actually product. buy. Product, oh. a thing. Yeah, it's this thing right here. It's the yeah. iPhone. They said the iPhone checks the most boxes in actually providing the values that are found on this pyramid. So you can start from the, the bottom. Does an iPhone inform you? Yeah, notifications. It lets mm -hmm. me reach out to the sensory appeal. Steve Jobs was important in that. There's haptics. It looks pretty, right? Variety, apps. It not only does one thing, a phone, not only texting, it does a good, it pretty much does everything. Quality, Steve Jobs was important in that. Reduces mm -hmm. costs. Well, you know, now you can start to like get you can get into well, it's sort of blah, 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 blah. now. Remember, I'll do this exercise with organizations. I'll break their board or somebody up into groups of two or three, and I'll go, hey, have fun with it. Here's a pyramid. Circle every one of these things, and a lot of people get they get circle happy. They start circling, <laughs> and I go around the room and I go, how many are on your list? How many on your list? And then I finally put up the big list on the screen. I go, great. Now we're going to open your website. We're going to go to your Instagram page. We're going to go to your YouTube. Show me where you do this. Then show me where and when you communicate this. And that's when we get what I call rhubarb. Have you ever heard of rhubarb? No. On a movie set, people in the background, background actors, they have to actually be talking to create that sort of din, that noise in the background. Mm -hmm. You can't be saying things because then the audience they would pick up on the mic. So background actors are taught to say the word rhubarb over and over and over again because it, it kind of sounds like nothing. I learned this. I learned random things. So it's when you ask a room full of students a question and they're and they're like, do you know the answer? And they start to sort of say, it, like, yeah, yeah, rhubarb, rhubarb, rhubarb. Yeah. They're not saying anything. That's what happens. They people they think that there's a value there. They're like I feel this value. I think I'm like great. Where is it? Well, you sort of just gotta. Nope, that's not how it works. If the value isn't there, so the reason I bring this up is like Elise, you are the product of the Onco PT. Not now, because we're live right now. <laughs> I would suggest taking a look at this Absolutely. and just Google B, the number, the letter B, the number two, the letter C, value pyramid, and you'll get this. With an explainer, their website's actually interactive, so you can click on each one of these circles, and it'll give you examples of a product that you've heard of that demonstrates each one of these 32 elements. And like the big one on top, self-transcendence, it's like, what is that? Their example for that is Tom's Shoes. By buying a pair of Tom's shoes, you feel like you are helping society. You are a part of it. You started it. You bought the shoes and Tom's shoes. When you buy a pair, they give away a pair. That's why Tom's shoes keeps getting talked about because that Bombas socks is another example. Buy a pair of socks. They, do you have Bombas socks? Is that why you're... Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. You need to be able to have these values and you need to be regularly communicating those values. You don't have to say, I have heirloom value but you need to demonstrate why uh, the, the Rolex watch. This is an this is a thing. Oh no, it's it goes in the safe deposit box. We mm -hmm. don't just this is the good china. That's heirloom. So that's life changing. Motivation. My Apple Watch dings at me when I haven't stood up in an hour. It tells me when I've got five hours left in my day, and I'm X number of movement points, which I don't even know what they are, short of my goal. So there's motivation. So this also goes into my, from my talk that I did at CSM, features versus benefits. 
a feature is the watch is 30 millimeters and the battery has maximum number of watts and whatever. But the benefit is it provides motivation. It looks, it has sensory appeal. It informs me. So my question, the reason I bring this up, and it sounds like I'm going on a random tangent, which is essentially how I talk. <laughs> but I think by identifying the things that Elise brings to get there it are tangible ways of making sure you're providing those things, saying what you want to provide. Because what Elise is trying to say is like, I'm going to be the Onco PT. And you did when you named yourself that, when you decided. Now, we got to work backwards on what values you provide. Make sure that they are. When someone lands on your website, they're like, I got what she's about. I get it. And then over then then what you communicate, what you post and share gets real easy. Or I should say simple. It's like, I need to provide this. So this is an exercise we should do. Probably not on the live stream because it really is dry erase boardy mm -hmm. but i like this value pyramid i bring this up it's why it's always handy is uh the, you know when someone tells me something about their product or service i'm like i didn't get that vibe and they're like oh of course of course that's in there i go not of course please stop saying of course Ooh. if i don't see it it means a lot of people probably aren't seeing it unless i'm well if you're in the club if you subscribe to my newsletter you get it great i'm gonna subscribe right now if i don't feel it in two newsletters i'm out i unsubscribe i never come back this is where people are confused. I don't know. I, prov I provide so much value. Do you? Which values? Which values do you provide? Because a combination of values added together makes me not think twice about spending a thousand bucks on the iPhone. Not even th I. I spend a thousand. I feel like I got five thousand dollars worth in value. Go a day without this. Good luck. The whenever they're trying to sell me a new phone, they always say, "How many times do you use this per day?" And I'm like, oh, "A lot." And they're like, "Now divide out what you're spending on that." by that minute, you know, and you're like, oh, I'm paying no pennies for this thing. Yeah, no obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, well, Elise, I want to, I want to know more about like what, where you're going. Yeah. What and, is like, what you set up? I'm like, tell us about the plan. Cause you, you've now Q1 been accountable, right? So like, what's next? Uh -huh. So what, what I've been, so kind of like where that kicks off is for in Q4, I have the second cancer rehab community conference that I'm hosting that I started last year. And so, uh, you know, this brand awareness that I'm curating now throughout the year is helping get people understanding like, oh, cancer rehab, Onco PT is a thing. Patients need help. Oh, I can help with that. Oh, here's the place to go where I'm going to learn more on how to do that. So that's kind of my big... So what else that is, I'm what going else on this on the year. Act, all, what else is on the action list for you? Are there things on the action list for you? You don't have to say all of them. Just, I mean, what's the, yeah. the things? Yeah. So we, I, right now, like personally, and I'm not going to give numbers because some of this is like a little bit of secret. Um, I have X number of sponsors that I'm working on getting this year for the conference. I have X number, and I'll, I'll say this one out there. I want to get my big, hairy, audacious goal for 2024. Mm -hmm. And this is also going to help me be accountable to this is I want 250 cancer rehab professionals or rehab professionals. They don't have to be cancer rehab specifically. I want 250 rehab professionals professionals to register for the Cancer Rehab Community Conference 2024. And there are specific steps and milestones that I am going towards throughout this year to make that happen. Like it. I love that. I have a gross question for you that you're going to like hate me for asking. Okay. I like hear all these wonderful things that you're doing for other people. But what on this plan is for yourself? to help develop you into a better therapist, to help develop you into the person that you want to be and to help develop you into where you want to be in that five, 10 year range, because you are an Onco PT. You are the Onco PT, but you're also Elise. So I want to know where that flow is on your side, because when we talk about professional development, that also includes your development. So I want to know kind of from that side, what's on that plan for you, friend? It's okay not to know. Yeah, it should be on like, the plan though. But, but, it but should I'm be on the plan right now because this the I run into this too, which is like you ever hear the the cobbler's son? It's like the shoemaker's son often has no shoes. It's like you're thinking right. about creating things for everybody else. When Rebecca asks you what's your plan on you, you're like, well, I don't know. It, and I fall into this trap, which is why it's easy for me to spot. It's the cobbler's <laughs> shoes. The cobbler's son has no shoes. 
But I think we all do, right? Which is why when I talk to people about making this professional development plan, that it has to include their life too. And it has to include mm -hmm. the flow between them. I don't really believe in balance. I believe in flow. Right. And to develop yourself as a professional, you just also have to develop yourself. So that's what I want to challenge you a little bit on with that plan. Because you're crushing the rest of it. But where's at least? Yeah. I think we're... So I actually sat down with my husband to do this plan. Like we did it separately and then we came together to do it. And I think where that Elise is, is in the together because we were able to kind of like step back and be like, what do we want out of this? And so for us, a lot of it comes down to financial security. Like we want to buy a house. And so that's something that we, like, again, there's that flow of, what I'm doing here enables us to be able to do that. So that's a little more of like the personal side of things. Mm -hmm. I also should probably revisit more of the personal things because I'm also very good at not doing that part. Can I show you something that yeah. I just learned this morning from a guy who has shown value enough that I subscribe to his newsletter and now I actually read it? Because subscribing to a newsletter is great, but actually reading it. So do you guys know Noah Kagan? He just wrote a book called um million dollar weekend so mm -hmm. he's one of these guys on instagram or twitter or whatever it's a business guy and he wrote a book called million dollar weekend where he can show you how to be begin a million dollar business in a weekend blah 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 i haven't bought the book yet but i subscribed to his newsletter and this was his newsletter this morning the question was how do you manage running a, su a successful business writing a book and having a long distance relationship where are your life hacks and he i love his answers like <laughs> how do i do it short answer not well long answer it's a challenge but I liked what he he gave a tactic down here at number two, which is what you're what I some of what you're talking about. He color codes he has four priorities in his life. Number one, he said them: work, health, personal, travel. Does yours need to be work, health, personal, travel? No, but it should it should be yours. It should matter to you, right? And he gave each one of those things a color. Work is blue, health is green, personal is red, yellow is travel, and then. He's able to quickly look at his schedule. And if he's like, you know, not a whole lot of green on my week this week, maybe I should invest in some green. And this, this little email has caused me to go back to my Google calendar and change. I used to do it in a different way. I used to do like recording. Everything was red for recording. And when I had to be on camera and now I'm like, oh gosh, but how can I look at my uh, calendar and do that? So I was hearing what you were talking about, making sure those elements were represented. And I was like, well, how do you how do you know? Well, there's not a lot of green on Noah's uh, 8th, 9th, and 10th of March. And he knows that because he took a quick look. I am confused at what he's got gray on there. I'm like, great, Noah's not in there. Um, but it it was a really good way to organize visual, but to not lose, not lose yourself in the minutia of your minute-to-minute -minute life. So I thought this cool life, I don't even That's know if it's a life cool. hack. I think, it's, I think a life hack is low hanging, low bottom of the spectrum. I think what he is highlighting is, are the four, what are the four things imp most important to you? Divide them into categories or five things, whatever. And then make sure that those things are in the mix, like a big old Chipotle burrito each week. I don't see no avocado in that. Great, throw some avocado in there. That's health. So. This and Jimmy, I like that you said in his week, right? Not in every day, right? but zooming out over time. And I think that really lends into what Rebecca was saying about this flow, right? Not every day is going to be where you're a hundred percent. I've checked off all the boxes. Right. Which also Rebecca would like this. I read something or heard something in a podcast where I'm guilty of, I do a me, I do a podcast. I do a live stream at 11. I do a meeting at 12. I do an editing session at one. And the idea is uh, task switching. So me switching from being on camera to being in a meeting to editing something. Those are three different parts of my brain. I do not know which parts of my brain it works, but there are three different parts. And the person speaking was an expert on sort of productivity or things like this. And he said, you lose 40% of your efficiency when I switch from being on camera to then immediately jumping into a meeting to then immediately ending the meeting and going to edit. So that's where he had been advocating for structuring days of the week where Mondays are my organization planning doing stuff days. Tuesdays and Thursdays are my recording days or you know mm -hmm. being on camera on a microphone making the stuff that I make. And Wednesdays and Fridays are meeting with people because people used to be like, Jimmy, when are you free? I'm like, whatever, man, I'm accommodating. When are you free? And that would screw my day up. But I was 
they weren't begging me to meet on Tuesdays. I was just saying, eh, whatever. Here's my calendar. I'm a blank. I'm a, I'm a wide open canvas. That screwed me up. I changed this in the last two weeks and I like it. I've been thinking about that too, because I think you're right. Like today it's like, I have like all of these like weird little things and then trying to fit stuff in between them also doesn't work very well either. And then, nice. but then like, you know, I came back from Boston a second time on oh, yeah. the weekend and three <laughs> sick kids. Right. So oh. like, it just like everything I had planned, the routine I had planned, the, all the greatness I was going to create this week, like flow, right? You just have to flow in the other direction. So I think that being flexible and and when I make that professional development plan, when I think about like, where do I want to be at the end of the year? Like, where do I want to be in my relationships? Where do I want to be in my parenting? What do I want to develop? Like, do I want to be a, a better at my presentations? Do I want to be better at connecting with people? Do I want to like, for me, I think I need to really focus on getting better at negotiating um, because I, I think I wildly undervalue. I agree my worth. And so like I had a conversation with somebody yesterday and he was like, well, what would it cost for you to do a class just for our staff? And it's like a two hour thing. I was like, oh, I don't know, like $300. And he was like, um, I'm going to pretend like you didn't say that. And I'm going to tell you, this is what I'm going to tell my boss. And I was like, okay. You know, so I, I have a lot of self-confidence in certain areas, but in others, like none at all. So when I, when I talk about that, like where else do you need to work on yourself? Where are your gifts? How can we maximize those? And then where are those like growth areas where you have to like look at yourself in a gross way, in an authentic way and like strip it down and then figure out how do you get the support for those areas that you need? So what are the areas? I guess you got to start with your, your NOAA colors, right? So work, health, personal travel, uh, for me it would be like worth work, health, personal, um, I don't know what my fourth would be, or I mean, maybe you don't need four, but like, I think that's step one in, in the exercise is figuring out what are the different ingredients to your life. And they should, they absolutely can and should be different. I think doing a SWOT analysis on your life and your business is a good place to start. Yeah. Like, how can you really like figure out where your weaknesses are? How can you figure out where your opportunities are, where your threats are, what your strengths are? And then like for me in my daily planner, I have a list of daily habits that I would like to complete that help me stay balanced. So some of that is like reading every day, listening to something intentionally every day, like what those things are. And those things help me with those like color balances, like movements, part of my everyday connecting with people every day. So I try to have that. Is it perfect? No, but it's like something to, it's visual. I can see it. How do you do it when you have a brain like me though? I don't know if I'm officially ADD or ADHD, but if I'm not, I'm right on that cusp. I'm nuts. I, but I say I'm nuts. Then people are like, you're not that nuts. But I feel like I sort of am is I really do chase the shiny object. I have a billion ideas, but I, ideas don't do anything with, unless you execute. So I lose on this. So, I, But I don't think I'm alone here. But when you fill out your, your SWOT analysis, right, you're like strengths, ideas, plans, you know, like goals, connections. And then your weaknesses might be, I can't complete the task. So what <laughs> do you then have to do? Your opportunities are for partnership. And then you have to find somebody to partner with. And you and I briefly talked about this yesterday that somebody called me a certain personality color. Have you heard of this? Oh, personality yeah, yeah, color yeah, yeah, yeah. And I am an orange. And some people that we are meeting with, the person who's running this project is a gold. And orange and gold people don't necessarily mix because gold people are, are theoretically very structured. They um, really want things done a specific way. Whereas orange people are like, let's go, let's just do it. You know, we'll get it done. I swear, you know? And so I think that's kind of when you have to take a step back and look at where are your opportunities for partnership that will help you reach that next level. Because Jimmy, I don't think there's any point in trying to change yourself. No, it's not going to work anyway. No. Like I, I, like, I, I was at a job. Uh, I won't say where. Um, but the job was like, Hey, you, we hired you to be a communicator. We hired you to do Jimmy things. Right. And then I was sort of like, well, how come you're not better at spreadsheets? And I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm not good at spreadsheets. I'm, I, well, we need you to invest time and effort into being good at spreadsheets. And I was like, okay. But, and then I countered and I was like, Hey, I'm going to spend this much effort, a lot of effort to be this much better at spreadsheets. And then I countered with, 
we have people who are good at spreadsheets at this organization, right? And they were like, yes. I'm like, are we f- asking them to be better communicators? And the answer was no. And I was like, then one doesn't, one makes sense to you, but the other doesn't. So I was like, I don't want to be better at spreadsheets. I want to triple down on what I'm good at and what you brought me here for. Well, we want you to be a well-rounded individual. And I was like, I don't want to be a well-rounded. I want to be super freaking, this is where it's like, do you want to be a really great surgeon at feet and knees and hips and hearts and brains? It's like, I don't know, man. If I'm going in for brain surgery, I don't care how good you are at feet. I really don't. Yeah, great. So uh, I want to talk about these colors. Yeah. It's like horoscopes for professionals. Yeah. <laughs> well, we did the color That's game. the best descriptor. <laughs> I think in grad school, this is like a really great icebreaker activity. I know we did this in PT mm-hmm. school. I was an and INFJ. Yeah, I don't know what that. I remember I took that a while ago. But this on the screen is the personality colors. Now, most PTs fell into what color in your class? Gold. No. No, no gold. in my class. Really? Yes, in my I, class, it was gold. Uh, blue is because compassion, sympathy, because you answered a questionnaire and then the basis of the questionnaire. So most PTs were compassionate, sympathetic, and wanted to build rapport. There were some gold and greens, but it did, when you learned what someone's color was and then you hung out with them, you're like, oh, get it. Because I had a roommate who was... <laughs> Whatever the like out of 40, everybody was a blue, and then you had like a secondary one. That's funny. But there were only like two or three golds or greens in our entire 40 person class, Rebecca. And you were told you were which are you? Elise, which one are you? I'm a blue secondary gold. Um, but I also think I I think over time I flow. Yeah. between and so like i gravitate towards blue but mm, sometimes then, i wonder Rebecca, you were told you were an orange orange like a flaming mm-hmm. orange like yeah. a cheeto orange which one do you think i am i think you're an orange yeah i was orange all day yes right. so let's go through these real quick and we didn't plan on doing this but we'll go through it so each characteristic or color has a strength a value a dislike and then how it's expressed so blue, where most of my classmates anyway, or I think most PTs are blue, and I think our professor even told us that, well, you're all going to be blue. The strength is auth- authenticity, it lists it as, and that comes out as a value of compassion, sympathy, and building rapport. Blues dislike hypocrisy, deception, and insincerity, and it's expressed with vi- vivacity, like vibrant, I guess, vi- vivacity, I've never heard that word before, enthusiasm and inspiration. Uh, Elise, you said you're a gold, or a park gold. A blue secondary gold. So your strength is duty. Your values are dependability, accountability, responsibility. That's why you're probably good at writing things down and actually doing them, where I'm not. <laughs> you dislike disobedience. You dislike nonconformity. So this is where golds and oranges would be like, we do not work well. Right. Because oranges are like, let's go. The way to get attention or the way to get people to uh, build build relationships is to actually do the nonconform thing. And then you dislike insubordination. And you're expressed it, you express that in concern, stability, and purpose. Does that sound accurate to you? And then green, green were like the uh, smart planner people. And it, their strength is knowledge. Their values are answers, intelligence, explanations. They dislike injustice and unfairness. And they express it cool and calm. This is the weird, creepy people with no heart rate raise. <laughs> not creepy but it's weird for me because my heart rate jumps whenever i hear an idea <laughs> right why are you laughing at that am i describing someone that you know <laughs> it just makes me laugh <laughs> and then orange this is an orange describing all these people though so you have to understand where it comes from uh orange strength is skillfulness i don't understand that well so one of the things that this this other thing says is oranges tackle their work with enthusiasm so they can quickly move on to other things so you and i are very much like that no, they're no. great at working under pressure Pressure so dynamics. that's why we're last minute kind of people. I do my best work 15 minutes before they grow restless with things that tie them down and limit their personal freedom, but they're straightforward, realistic and pl- practical workers. It also says that, um, you know, they can be a little blunt. We dislike and- rigidity and authority. Mm-hmm. I, so, so I'm going to push back at this a little bit is that I actually like the box. People are always saying, think outside the box. And I watched a former person that I interned for, or I interned at a radio station, and Howard Stern was the morning guy. When he jumped from terrestrial radio, where there were a lot of rules and things you can and cannot say, 
on the radio, unless you get fined. And he went to Sirius XM radio. There was no more box. And in my opinion, Howard Stern wasn't as great. He could do anything he wanted. There was no villain in the story. Mm. So this chart says orange, people like me or Rebecca, we dislike rigidity and authority. I actually kind of like authority because I like when authority is my wingman because I understand how far I can go. The authority in usually my life, like my best friend from second grade, he's like the straight guy and I'm the wild one. But I, he always lets me know when I've gone too far. So he's authority. The problem where I think it says that Orange is dislike rigidity and authority is when it's a creative campaign. The Golds can't be in charge. You can keep me on task, but I'm very sorry. The golds and Greens should not be running the world. And that's where I think a lot of companies, they're like, we're going to follow the CEO. I think a lot of CEOs are Golds and Greens. And people might push back, well, how many CEOs are Orange? Maybe not a lot, but I think oranges might not need to be the CEO, but they need to be a loud voice in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like, like, like Richard Branson or Mark Cuban. Like they are my get, they are oranges, right? They have a little, we all have a little bit of blue, a little bit of gold, a little green, a little bit, right? But, but predominantly. And it, I think the quickest way to failure is when oranges aren't at the helm or at least deciding where the things go. I, I think there's like, you want to put different people in different roles, right? Yeah. right? And I think if, to your point, if you're looking for somebody who's gonna like come up with that great idea, inspire people, move people in a certain direction, maybe an orange is the person to do that. But then you need, you know, some of your blues to help seal the deal with their compassion and their rapport with other people. You need them to help inspire others also, but then you need your golds and your greens to help get it done. Because right. I'm going to, I'm going to be like, here's this fabulous idea. That's and then right. I have a green partner who's going to be like, yeah, except that's not going to work. And here's why. And I'm like, great, we'll do something else, you know? And so like, I think oranges can roll pretty well Yep. if we know why. Yeah. What I I'll I'll bring up an example when when golds and greens are in charge of an orange project because again there are some projects that I should not be anywhere near right but I work in projects that are orange projects Jimmy yeah. projects Jimmy things um, I call it a Frankenstein and the idea is someone will give me a task or a goal to hit we need to communicate X Y Z to these people because of this and we need them to do or know this got it. Mm -hmm. I go away, I come back with a really great idea or a couple different ideas. And what happens is the golds and greens are like, yeah, do exactly what you just said, Rebecca. Yeah, but but we got to play it safe on this and this and this. And what happens is a Frankenstein. And what I mean by that is they change a little bit of the arms. Just a, Jimmy, you have to be flexible, just a little bit. And then so much about the head, we got to change, well, we got to change a little more about the head. And then the feet, a little bit about the feet, a little bit about the knees. And next thing you know, by the time you're done, those little itty bitty changes, it's not a little bit of a less of a good idea. It's a bad yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. I know that you've, listen, if I order a vodka soda and you throw a, a little bit of water in it, it is not a little bit less of a good vodka soda. It is a crappy drink. It immediately becomes, I don't know where that is, an ounce, a half an ounce, a quarter of an ounce. It's, it becomes a crappy drink. Ideas are no different. So I don't have the, uh, the exact formula. If I did, I'd be a very rich person. But um, in orange-like projects, if an orange person isn't at least driving the bus, I'm not saying charting the course, right? But they have to be, this is where I, I see a lot of things uh, fail, is I get brought into projects by golds and greens. We want you here because you're creative. I tell them this is the way. Mm -hmm. If it goes this way, you have to do all these things though. And then they change a little bit, a little bit, and they, it doesn't work. And they go, communications doesn't work. I go, no, crappy communications doesn't work. You failed to do these three things that I told you to do, and that's why it didn't work. So I make suggest, I, but I have I have distanced myself from that a little bit, where I say I make suggestions, but you make decisions. Mm -hmm. I told you to do it this mm -hmm. way, and we'd have success. You decided to change it. That's on you. But because we did that, it now doesn't work because it's a different thing. It's a Frankenstein. It walks like a man. It talks like a man. It's not a man though. It's a monster. That's creativity by committee. It scares the crap out of me. I think this is interesting. So in PT school, we had a conversation at one point. It was like one of those kind of one-off classes where I think they literally asked us, do you want to be a manager or do you want to be a leader? Oh. And you, an organization. That's a good point. Needs both. 
but not every person is equipped and set up and destined to be both like you tend to have a skill set in either one or the other like i'm not saying you can't do both but a really good manager is not going to be a really good leader and i think where we see this even like in my own life this is kind of some language that i stole from somebody else is there is a a wow person and there is a how person and and we even like in our own home sometimes my husband and i flip-flop between how and wow whoever that is and it's okay but you have to give time for the wow 24 hours is usually our rule of like you have to be able to wow and almost wow yourself out for 24 hours before the how can come in and how it to death what does that mean yeah so when I come up with my latest harebrained idea, I go mm-hmm. to my husband. I'm like, I have this idea. And what we have learned for our relationship and also for our long-term success is that I need to be able to have this excitement and this passion or vice versa, right? Yes. For 24 hours, because that gives me time to go up on the highest high, but also to come back down a little bit and then start to say, oh, what about this? Okay. How am I going to do that? Okay, well, what about this kind of deal? And so at that 24-hour mark is when the other person can come in and be the how and be like, how are you going to do this? How are you going to do this part? And so it's more of that logistics, how is this actually going to work before you go off and buy seven domains you yeah. know, on the internet and start a new business kind of deal? And so that is how we have found it to work in our own lives. And so I do think like, Again, kind of with this concept of flow, we need to have the person or the team who can be like, wow, here's what we're going to do. And that's okay. And not immediately come in with the scissors and, you know, like do our our Frankenstein thing and then how it to death. Like there needs, this is a really, really hard thing to do, I think, especially in organizations. So I'm not saying I have the fix. Don't worry, y'all. But I think it's almost easier sometimes in like smaller teams, like all of us are in to kind of have this like, wow, and then how, and then make them work together. Yeah. I think that's where I, I sort of, because I, I work alone a lot. I think that's where I fall apart is I was used to being one of five or six full-time people at a radio station where it was the wow and how was the time period was truncated. It was like, you go on the air at three. We just got handed the new Nirvana. What are we doing? And it was like, turn. I got a cease and desist order for that move, by the way. I framed it. though. But it was like, well, you just got this thing. How do we respond? Where the golds or the greens, I can't remember because I'm an orange. I don't pay attention to detail. Uh, the golds or the greens would be like, let's sit around for 24 hours and put together a plan. I'm like, you don't understand. Our competition is already moving on this. Right. The answer is you go, we go on the air at three. What's our how? We know that we, how are we, how are we going to wow is what an orange would do. They're like, how am I going to wow? Like, let's get the plan and let's execute because ideas are a dime a dozen. This is coming from a guy who has ideas every 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's execution. You cash that check with execution. We are now hiring for how people. (laughs) (laughs) Job applications being accepted for how people. Right. At each of the following organizations. I want to bring something up that I thought of earlier that I think fits kind of with this, you know, Jimmy, you keep coming back to like, I'm an ideas guy. Like I have ideas every 30 seconds or whatever. I'm also kind of like that too. And I think Rebecca is too, to an extent of what I've grown to know about. to not be able to get them all. So frustrating. Right. And so I think that was almost paralyzing for me for a really long time because I had so many ideas and then they were just like, as soon as they came, they were gone. But genuinely, there were two questions in particular in going through the professional development plan that kind of helped me zoom in on what I really am like, oh, this is an idea that I want to just float on by and that's okay. And this is an idea that I want to stick around. So Two questions. What accomplishment are you most proud of? I think is sometimes harder to answer for ourselves than Mm -hmm. what we give ourselves credit for. And then is this where you plan to be at this stage in your career? And there were lots of good questions on there, Rebecca. I'm not trying to like bring it down to just two questions, but those two questions for me really forced me to sit in the discomfort that I sometimes have 
in reflecting on my own success and accomplishments and achievements, but also am I actually doing what I set out to do at the start of all of this? And if that's not matching, that is, I think, sometimes just as uncomfortable to sit in, be like, I am not, this is not matching what I thought. And so for me, those two have helped me really zone, like zoom in on as ideas come, is this one that I really want to see through? Or is this an idea that I can just, I can tuck away for later and it's okay. Yeah. Leave it in the shopping cart, but don't buy it. Right. I do that a lot on Amazon. I definitely want this. I'm going to buy the 4,000 piece Millennium Falcon Lego set. Absolutely. And I will eventually, but I leave it in the cart and I hit save for later. See? Yeah. I don't know That's what the hell wow, to do with Wow and that. how. Wow and how. So I, that so that one question that you just asked, what are you most proud of? I worked at a couple different places and I asked myself that question and I couldn't come up with an answer. And that's when I knew I had to leave. Wow. I was like, I'm not really proud of anything wow. that I've done here. I could point to a lot of things when I ran radio stations because I baked into the cake things that would make me proud. Like, yeah, making the radio station money. That wasn't one of them. That right. was a, that was right. that was something my boss probably liked me to do. I had a couple moments there when I was like, I'm proud of this. That there, there's a highlight reel moment. And I think I worked at a couple different companies after getting my PT degree and I couldn't come up with it after a year. And that's when I decided both of those times to leave. Wow. Actually three times, three different times. And that is really good for professional development planning because it helps you make decisions and not get stuck because that's that question, right? Am I where I wanted to be in my career right now? Yeah. Or did I wake up 10 years later and looked around and think, I'm still here. How did I get here? What am I doing here? How did I get here? How did I get stuck here? And where did the last 10 years go? And where is that I actually want to be? It's like waking up from a from a dream all of a sudden and realizing it's not not the right place. Well, I'm in that scary part, right? I mean, we talked about this as my dad had a stroke months ago and I had a job then and I couldn't do it because my dad was living with me. And now he's not. He's back at his house most of the time. And that's good. So now I got time. But now I have to figure out where the hell I fit. What am, what what are the things that excite me? And I don't know the answer to that. I would be really good at coaching myself if I wasn't me. Like it's really mm, good to coach same. other people. Like so obvious to other people. It's super not obvious to me. Yeah. I guess it's a SWOT analysis. I don't know. I don't want to just keep doing exercises. Like. Well, but you have to make the plan, right? Like the plan has to go with the exercises. And where I, I mean, find when people are going the through the plan, when they're going through the plan they get stuck on the vision. And once you kind of get your vision nailed in, it's not really hard to decide what the plan looks like or how to have a meaningful yes and a meaningful no when people offer you opportunities. Yeah. But that's where people quit because they can't see themselves. They can't see their vision. They get to, they, they fill out all the like form. They fill out the form. And then when they have to generate this vision of who they are, and who they want to be and what they want their life to be like actually true like a vision for their professional life they get stuck and usually when i work with people on that i talk to them about lots of things it's like when you do your intakes with clients jimmy and you ask them you do like a pt eval on them i kind of do a pt eval on on where they are in their professional life and i listen to all the things that they're saying to me and i write things down and then it, often it's like a sticky note because usually the themes that keep coming up that they don't hear themselves saying fit on a sticky note. Mm -hmm. And then That's I hand them the sticky note and almost always their eyes well up with tears and they're like, oh, there I am. Here I am. I don't know mine. You need somebody to listen yeah. and you need somebody to see you. Yeah. I talk a lot, but maybe I don't say enough. Uh -huh. I don't know. I think you say a lot. <laughs> Maybe you just can't hear yourself. That's what that's sort of why. So I do two live streams a week to uh, Dave and, and Tony earlier in the day and then and then one with you guys. And I sort of like because most of the time I come into interviews and regular episodes super prepared or at least outlined, not never scripted, but outlined. And with my radio background, I was always sort of afraid of dead air or where do we go next? Or is this awkward or what's the next step? That's why I probably don't like dancing. I can't, I don't, this is where it's like, he's an orange should love dancing. Can't stand it. 
because it's this, I don't know what's going on here. What am I? And then I feel awkward. But I think that this whole live streaming thing, which is like a uh, stream of consciousness is like good because it's just like, get all the, we do this a lot in ad campaigns. What should the tagline be for this? And we used to yell things out and whatever the first 10 or 15 or 20 would come out, we'd throw them out. That's what everybody else would do. That was the low hanging fruit. I want to go higher on the tree. So if I were to do that, all right, let's just keep going. If I were to do that in my career, I want to, I thought I wanted to be a consultant and I like that as sort of a hobby aside thing, but being a consultant, I don't get to work with other people. I come into an organization, I tell them what to do and I sort of leave and come back and I go, did you do it? And they go, yeah, kind of, can't you just do it for me? No, I'm not an employee. Can't do that. It's not how it works. Not that I don't want to do it, but maybe I'm not built for that or I'm not built for that to be full time. Maybe my color on my calendar shouldn't be all consulting. Maybe that should just be like what I do 20% of the time. And I'm fulfilled by that because that's kind of fun. But I'm missing the 80% of what I should do in terms of work. Because mm -hmm. I miss being a part of a team. I miss being a part of, you know, my life was a radio station where there's a bunch of people who were similar at what I did, but never the same strengths and weaknesses different than mine. And we always had a problem of how to communicate this. And we always came at it, always came at it from different directions. And it was like, oh, yes, and, yes, and, yes, and. And the thing was, that was where creativity by committee was better. Because it wasn't, here's an idea, let's break it apart and tear it down, or let's dissect it. It was, let's put it together from the bottom up. And then let's make sure that thing can walk and talk and make sure it's not a, make sure it's not a Frankenstein. But then I also was in charge of the radio station. I was the one who said, go. I was the one who at least was... Uh, what, because I was taught well s by smart people, they're like, you can't water it down. It's either a wow, and then you figure out the how. You don't figure out how, then wow. Yeah, I think the wow's got to come first. What if you had your own team? That's my problem. I don't know how to, I always took over a radio station. There was always a team there, and I figured out how to use them. But what if you built your own like dream team? And then you could be a consulting firm and those people how to do, do that. Things. How do I do that? I don't know how to do that. Yes. The answer is yes, but I have no idea what that's what step two is. There's the wow, be a team. How? I don't know. Because all I see is the end result of that. But I miss people. That's my problem. Yeah. I don't want to be. I, yeah, go ahead. Can I share a quote that I half heard and then wrote down this morning? Yeah. Um, have the audacity. Mm-hmm. Stop worrying about the how, have the vision. <laughs> I was literally listening to something else entirely this morning before this. Have the audacity, have the vision, stop worrying about the how. The how will come. Yeah, and I like that, except now I don't have a job. And I have a house, and I have a dad who's sick, and I have people that count. So yes, I agree to all of that. And I would be giving myself the same advice. But... No, I mean, I like no pressure, no diamonds, right? I like pressure, but like now it's like, I need to just do the same thing. It's definitely a, a scarcity place to be, right? When you're yeah. in a situation like that's not a good orange pressure. Yeah. That's oh, not a good orange pressure. A good point. Not all pressure is equal. Some pressure. No, because like pressure is made out of scarcity and like fear, right? Like they're going to make you choose something that feels safe that like you may not fit with your orange personality, right? And you're like, nope, this is the thing that I should do. So I'm going to do that. Uh, and I'm having that conversation with myself a lot right now. Maybe I should just go back to full-time clinical care. Maybe I should just stop this. Maybe I should just give up this that I really enjoy because it doesn't provide what I need it to provide financially. You know, it's like, but if we can grow with it and not get trapped in that scarcity mindset, which is hard when people depend on you, it's hard. You got to figure out a way around it. I wrote this text message to a friend this morning and I don't know why she asked why she texted me, but she was like, Hey, how's it going? And I've decided to be honest. And I wrote, I'm starting to think that just maybe I'm not actually useful at all. And maybe I've just been a really, really great bullshitter for a long time. Ooh. Like, I am very good at bullshitting. It's like, that's, what, that's what communicating is, right? In a good way. Like, bullshitting would be like the negative way to say it, right? But it's like, I need you to understand this. And to understand it, I need to put it into a story. And the story is not always direct. It's why I tell a story about this. It's why we tell fairy tales. Telling a kid to not 
uh, you know, plan for a rainy day because every once in a while something might come doesn't work. But telling the story of the big bad wolf does work. You have to create the villain, right? That's what, so it's like bullshitting. I think I'm a bullshitter, but I think the thing that I bullshit is like, I believe in it. Like I'm not, that's why I, I didn't leave PT when I left clinical practice. Cause I really do believe in the, the service that we provide. I really do. I honestly do. But just repeating the same boring message doesn't do it. So I'm like, great, we need to start bullshitting. And like, that's funny too. Is like, hey, I was bullshitting with my friend the other day. That's like a positive version. It's like, just, you know, this. But in that message I wrote to my friend this morning, I'm like, maybe I'm not actually, maybe it's just not, maybe I'm hype. I don't, I mean, you have to think like that. I think, I think you have to honestly assess yourself. Maybe the thing you've been selling all along and maybe the, at least you have to ask yourself that. Maybe it's not true, but I, I don't know. Okay, I would argue first that it's not true, but then second, I would say, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with what part? Selling what hype. What's wrong with being hype? Right, which is which goes back to a Denny's at CSM seven years ago, and my professor at the time, or I think I just graduated, goes, "What? It's the back of a." a menu at Denny's. She flipped it over and was like, here's the, here's the plan. What do you want to be in 10 years? And that's almost 10 years ago. And I said, I want to be the voice of physical therapy. And that doesn't mean I want to be the only voice in physical therapy. Ironically, I was like, I want to be the WD-40 of all the other smart people because they don't have a microphone. I'm like, I can see your brilliance. I can help you teach people stuff. I, I the J Jimmy Fallon isn't the star of the Jimmy Fallon show. I think he would agree with me. It's who he yes ands with all day. He gets Justin Timberlake or Charlize Theron to yes and. I think, ironically, his name's on the show, but he, I think he would agree that he's not the star. I don't know. I'm just talking now because both of you are looking at me funny. <laughs> I think you're underselling yourself quite a bit. And I think your goal of being the voice of physical therapy is accurate because yesterday I saw on somebody's Instagram a student. She wasn't even, hadn't even started the program yet. She was, it was like right before she had started PT school and she had a screenshot of your podcast that she was listening to. And it said, I love this podcast. I listen to it every time I'm in the car because the way Jimmy McKay talks to leaders in this profession makes me more and more excited about my future. And this is a this is a second career PT. This is somebody who's going into it with a family, like moving into their life. And you are part of what made that person know what PT was, explain the different types of PT and have her continue to be excited about it. And I met her last week and she said, I found you from Jimmy's podcast. Mm -hmm. And now I listen to your podcast. And then when when I hear both of you talk about physical therapy, I'm excited about it. And I'm excited to see what I'll be when I grow up. Yeah. So that's one ripple. Right. So you all, you really have met that goal, Jimmy. So my challenge is like, what's next? You are the voice of PT. Like, what's next? I don't, I don't know. I guess now I do the how, I guess. Is that what you were saying? That was my wow for you. Wow. Is that it? Like, I'm honestly asking. Like, I don't know because I've been doing this for eight years and I really do like it. But now I'm like, is this a thing? Like eight years in, is this a thing? Because I don't have a hundred thousand followers. We we've we've gotten five million downloads over eight years. It's pretty good. It's almost a million a year, right? It's good. But I don't I don't know. Yeah, what do I do with that? Is that a job? Is that on my no Noah Kagan thing? Is that what I do full time? I don't know. Because that's what Ike guy. We've talked about Ike guy, right? The four circles. Mm -hmm. It's like. Uh, what you're good at, what the world needs, what you can get paid for, what you love. Because just because you're, and that, that's where I think people get confused. I'm good at it. Do you love it though? Because you might be right. good at something you don't love. Don't yeah. do that. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I got to figure out what that is. Am I a media company? Am I a guy with people around me? But I don't know how to go from a guy with a camera and a microphone to a company. I don't know how to go from one employee to two. I do not. Because to me, that's risky. So do I get a full-time job and then I'll figure it out later? Or is that the nail in my coffin? Because I'll figure it out later. Someday is code for never. I don't know the answer. Well, Jimmy, what should I do? With what uh, With what part? With, so with you? it's just me. Should I hire somebody to help me do all the stuff that I hate doing so that I can I like, actually... Get, I think you should go get your first big-ass client. I think you should wow them. 
and then be like, okay, you, all right, I'm not even going to ask at least this one, but a, a team, 80s sitcom, you got Hannibal, Mr. Got T, Mr. T, B.A. Baracus, you got Face Man, and you got um, Howlin' Mad Murdoch. My problem is I'm not Hannibal. Hannibal is the guy who is in charge. At least you just leave the chat at this point. I'm <laughs> weird. 80. <laughs> Hannibal was the guy whose his tagline was, I love it when a plan comes together. And I like, but if you watch the 18 movie, I think I'm more face man. But in the, in the 18 movie, face man was trying to always learn from Hannibal to be the next. It's like, I like being Robin. I really do. And some people be like, why do you always want to be Robin? That's the second fiddle. I go, I just sort of like his position. I never wanted to be the pitcher. I always kind of wanted to be like the first baseman, like next to the guy. I don't know how to lead by being the second. I don't know. Robin can't start. Hawkeye couldn't start the Avengers. It needed to be Captain America or Iron Man. You just, like, I'm trying to use parallels that Elise would understand. Barbie. I didn't see them. I don't get that one. <laughs> yeah, I want to be Ken, man. You was, you're yeah. Ken F. You are Ken F. What does that mean? You need to see oh the movie. my god, that's your right. for today is I'm that you need to watch the Barbie movie. All right, so we've been talking for an hour. I guess I'll 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 do something I rarely do, which is I'll re-listen to an episode because most of the time I record it and then I'm done. But I re-listen to this. What about some doing the professional development plan? How do I do? It? Yeah, tell me what to do. I'm a doer. What do I do? Why is, well, I it? I have like a short webinar on my website about what professional development planning is and why. Um, and then it has like a whole thing that you can work through. And then when people get stuck, like Elise is like, thank you template. I'm, I'm can follow instructions. I'm going to just crush it. And other people are like, they listen to the whole lecture. They get really expired. Then they start working through the form and they're like, help me. Yeah. That's so funny. I also do that. So yeah. it's, it's a thing you can do. And all right. It. Fine. I can't ask for help. And then when it's presented in front of me, I can't say no to it. That's, yeah. that's what we call an ask hole. I didn't come up with that, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> you ever get people like that? They're asking, and asking, and asking. And I'm like, yeah. I'm tired of giving you the answers because you're not doing anything. Yes. That's where I, I, I had a post recently where I was like, my answer to your problem is not going to change based on your lack of, a, of willingness to, to do it. And that's not trying to say that my answer is the only way. But you asked me for an answer and you didn't do it. Go ask someone else. Like that's a solution. I'm not going to give you 50 only to have you not do 50. If you are still listening, this is longer than an average episode at 62 minutes. I'm curious. Write me a DM or, or do something to let us know because I'm be very curious because I'm always have that internal clock from radio where I was taught. I talked between Foo Fighters and Lincoln Park like that was my life it was like bang, bang, bang. And it was like, you're going too long. So I'm always like, I but I don't know. I don't. But also, should I care what the audience thinks? Because really, this is this is for me. And then the right people will find what we do. You don't like what we do. I, I can't turn myself into you can't go from an orange to a green oh, that would be disturbing i wouldn't be able to do it i've been told that i'm too much I've and too much. there are i don't know if you've seen gosh what's her name elise her name is elise elise myers elise myers a content creator if you if you don't follow her you should but she always says if i'm too much then go find less yep ah uh, i i've been told i move too fast in meetings on projects and then i say mm. i agree with you but yeah. then I'm allowed to say I'm allowed. I am now allowed to say you're moving too slowly, and yeah. both of those things are. And if I can prove it, it's, I just can't make a comeback. Well, if I'm too fast, but I've watched projects fail or be less successful because of the speed at which we moved. I'm not saying mine's perfect, but I'm saying too slow is bad as well. And that bicycle analogy, which is like, man, you ride a bike too slow, that thing falls over. You got to have some speed. Mm -hmm. We got to decide what a good speed is for us. So I get in trouble for that because I'm usually out in front. <laughs> We'll figure it out. But that was, the, that was the industry I came in. But I don't think it was an accident I was in radio. I could have been in TV. But it took all day to get one three-minute story. I was like, no. Give me something that I can turn a microphone on, and it's happening right now. Go. Yeah. And that's sort of why I like the live stream versus the recorded podcast. But there was no plan, and we just talked for 64 minutes. No. And I got a lot out of it. And if you did too, awesome. But also, hey, I got a lot out of it. So that's... <laughs> This is about me, people. All right. Parting shots. What do you want to wrap up with today? I mean, do Rebecca's professional development planning. Like, mm. I like how wow. That's something I'm taking away. I, 
think oh, how wow. wow was it for me. Wow. Nope. How. Wow. How. Yeah. Wow, how. I think that was it for me. And then also like just remembering yourself when you're thinking about developing your professional life, you might need to develop yourself too. Like don't forget the you inside of who you want to be. Yeah. I would say how wow for me was the thing I took apart. Well, wow. How man. How wow. <laughs> Uh, thanks for coming to my hour-long therapy session with Rebecca and Elise providing the therapy. But that's what this is. Therapy Barbies. Know. Therapy, therapy Barbies. Barbies. Okay. Uh, the best conversations happen at happy hour. Thanks for coming on. <laughs>